It's Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. Coming up on the program today, lowering the pleasure anchor down my sloppy gaping piss well. Plus, good news, tit lovers, boobs are back. Alex Jones's lawyer is also an amateur stand-up comedian and a breakfast abomination. All coming up today. Now, for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, you can own a copy of one of the best Christian low-budget films ever made. Seduction of Cindy. Watch two of the hottest sex stars come together for your pleasure and theirs. He likes to rub his big thing all over me. And I love it, too. You'll meet a lot of my other friends and yours in this sizzling, action-packed movie, Seduction of Cindy. There's the insatiable Serena, who will take it any way she can get it. I want you to come and see me and my friend Sega take it in the mouth, in our cunts, and in our hot little butts. <laughs> Please, come soon. I can't wait to please you and your friends in this theater. Seduction of Cindy. Coming in this theater very soon with an all-star cast. Rated triple X. Furthermore, your purchase will affect change in the industry by supporting the development of values-based character-building entertainment. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Hansen. Hi, Galileo 2233. Welcome to the home. She is a fat cunt. Are you on the internet? Isn't that for techno geeks with spreadsheets? Christian now fears his flatulence. Yes, Tim Manson back here with you for the Wednesday edition of Distorted View Daily. Thank you so much for joining me. Got a jam-packed show for you. Real quick, at the top, I I have a meet update. I'm not going to turn this into a whole segment, but... Last week, we were reading message board posts from Mead where he mentions that he has uh, multiple personalities, specifically a little girl living inside him named Shelly. And on the live stream, I think I said something like, uh, like, this is new. Mead has never mentioned that he has multiple personalities or alters. This is all because he's on TikTok and this is some dumb new trend. Teens thinking they've got multiple personalities. Well, I have to issue a bit of an apology Reverend Skullfucker, nice name, pointed out in the Discord that Meat actually started talking about his alters last summer, back in 2021. He even mentions some of the other personalities living in his brain. Now, you know I have a shitty memory, and I have to believe we covered this video when it was published, because it's too good not to. It's classic Mead. I don't know if we got to the part where he mentions his multiple personalities, but here's just a recap. Uh, This video is called... (laughs) Head Injury, Trauma, and PTSD. In it, Mead says uh, he got a concussion when he was thrown from his horse, who is all horned up and in heat. Okay, so when I was 14 years old, um, I was thrown from my horse and I got a mild concussion. You know, I, I don't know how Mead feels about horses now, but looking back, a lot of bad things happened while horseback riding. He got a concussion, which led to his multiple personalities and trauma. That girl that he liked when he was a teenager used to go horseback riding with him. She filed a restraining order against him or something. Then she stopped riding horses with Mead, and Mead found out that she was riding horses with another boy. If I were Mead, at that point, I would swear off horses. They are no longer my favorite animal. No, they're not. They're cursed. All right, so Mead gets thrown from his horse because it got spooked by a crow. Well, they had the paramedics there, and this was 1993, so they had the paramedics there, but they were there anyway because, oh, well, there's certain risks. For some reason, people think jumping a horse is is a, a dangerous sport. I don't know. They're there because shit like what just happened to you happens. Horses are easily fucking spooked. You got a concussion. You yourself said your brain was rattling in your head. So I landed on my head, and um, it's like when you get a concussion, you go bouncy, bouncy. Your brain goes bouncy, bouncy. It's like your brain is jello. And me can't understand why paramedics are standing by during horse shows. 
Actually, I strongly believe that paramedics should be wherever meat is going because a lot of stuff has happened to his brain. I've had other, uh, believe it or not, I've had several uh, brain injuries. I can believe it, actually. Uh, not, you know, nothing medically significant, but, oh, I was... I think all brain injuries are medically significant. Dropped on the head when I was a baby. Uh-huh. Um, some other things, too. My older sister pushed me down the stairs. Oh, I am desperate to learn about Mead's siblings. That's like a big question mark, right, in Mead's life. He doesn't really talk about his family, aside from his dad. We know a little bit about him, and his mom died. As a matter of fact, his mom dying may have led to those multiple personalities. And so, after my mother died, I think it really caused a split in my personality. Now, I'm not saying I have multiple personality disorder. Meanwhile, that's exactly what he's saying now. Now, a lot of folks say, well, multiple personality disorder doesn't even exist. I do think I have alters, like I have different people. Now, when I was at the statue last year, I think that was Robert. Robert is a 16-year-old boy. Oh, when he was t- uh, taking down that Confederate statue, it wasn't Meade. It was one of his alters. And he's... Even though it, that was a very Mead thing to do. Very determined. He's like, uh... You know, very, but I think even a 16 year old, you know, is still kind of a kid. And I think when he was up there, he just, he had a meltdown because he, like, he was overwhelmed. And I think he's still a child. He wants to be a man. He's still a child. That's, that's Robert. And, um, Robert is very gung ho on, um, protecting honor and confet and Confederate. Uh, heritage and Southern <laughs> heritage and Robert's a lot like me. All right, um, he's very much like that. But Robert gets very irritated when Shelley comes out. Shelley is a 16 or 15 year old girl. Now I know everyone's going to ask, does Shelley like boys? No, <laughs> Shelley. It doesn't really have a sexuality per se. She's just really into fashion and um, <laughs> she's kind of like um, I don't know. Just just kind of this girl. That sometimes, every now and then, it's a side of me, okay? I don't know. And she thinks boys are immature. But she likes fashion, and she's not really into country music. She likes more like pop music. Um, and Shelly likes bright colors, and um, <laughs> she's into uh, romantic movies, stuff like that. So, now- so this is just a way for me to rationalize why he doesn't like things that are quote unquote manly or masculine. So if you ever, you know, if you caught me watching uh, like Bridget Jones's diary or a lifetime original movie, he can just say, that's not me. That's Shelly. Another one is, um, is it Trevor? I think it's Trevor. He's very gung. Trevor is very gung ho into fitness. Yeah. I'm guessing Trevor doesn't make himself known very often. He's about 26 years old. He pushes me, you know, he has me bike riding in the middle of the night doing weights and stuff. And he says, you got to get in shit, you got to push it, man, you got to do it now. You got to be tough. You got to, no pain, no gain. Well, there you go. Uh, That is me talking about his alters last year. I thought this was a new thing. Although we've been featuring fake disorders on TikTok for a while now. I still think that's where me got this from. As a bit of a palate cleanser, let me play this clip that uh, Haley's Comet submitted. This is an a cappella version of one of my favorite songs. I wonder if they do the part where she goes. Hey, this song sounds pretty great, a cappella. Good job. I think this is a high school talent show or something. These look these kids look very young. That really elevates the clip even more, doesn't it? Maybe it was like a, a, a college thing because uh, the audience seemed to enjoy it. They were laughing. All right, moving on. Oh, another little update. Yesterday on the Sideshow exclusive podcast, we were playing some uh, really insane live stream content. One of the clips involved former Hollywood star Andy Dick jerking off a guy while he slept. Unknowingly, he was woken up to whispers of, if you want me to stop, wake up now. And uh, that that snapped him out of his slumber pretty damn quick. 
Tyler Soares provided a link to a another clip of Andy creeping on some straight guys. Sure. Now, Andy does. I don't think Andy has a house of his own anymore. He's just sort of hanging out in RVs and crashing at other people's places. In this clip, Andy is uh, looks like he's laying down on some sort of cot that's positioned right by the kitchen. <laughs> And he's getting ready for bed. I chew the lid off my fucking cops. That's Andy. You have to listen closely because there's a lot of people talking, but he's uh, he's mentioning that he chews the top off of his cup so he knows it's his. Good strategy. Well, I saw that. I'm proud of you. I know it's mine. I'm proud of you. Thanks, buddy. Are you going to come lay down off me tonight? And there Andy is asking if he's going to get a little cuddle partner tonight. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a boring straight male. Denied. You know, I watched a bunch of this live stream and I, I left just feeling bad. <laughs> kind of bad for Andy Dick because the, these guys who are doing these live streams just kind of exploit him for his celebrity. What little of that he has left. They just, they set up a camera, like a stationary camera, and they just, they put it on Andy as he's sleeping or whatever. Uh, later on, he sort of wakes up. Oh, wow. Fucking awful music in the background. You can't hear shit. Who watches these streams? It's ridiculous. Can you hear me, baby? One second. Uh-huh. One second. I got to play the same beat over and over. God, I love yeah, I mean, <laughs> Andy has his hand down his pants saying he wants to fuck. God, I <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can sort of hear Andy saying he wants to fuck the shit out of someone. Some of these streams go on for 11 hours. Nothing happens. I guess there's like a whole industry of, uh, you know, taking these 11 hour clips and then whittling them down to the two or three good minutes where something actually happens. <laughs> Those are called highlights. It's a whole world I don't understand. Anyway, that's a little Andy Dick update for you. Still trying to get his dick wet, I guess. Uh, so that video was posted just a few days ago, April 16th. Good luck, uh, Andy, on your quest for penis. This is a good a time as any to transition. How dare you? No, not that kind of transition. Transition to porn. This clip that was uh, submitted to our Discord is titled Pissing in His Wide Open Asshole. It currently has a 3.9 star rating out of 5. And the description reads, His anus gapes open thanks to the speculum as I empty my bladder into this kinky boy. Let's uh, take a listen to this masterpiece. I have bad for these names. I'm sorry, Master Piss. I have bad for these names. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, nothing's happening right now. It's just weird when, like, you're, you know, you're not getting fucked. Nothing sexual is happening, but you're still like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, it, it makes me think you don't want this. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Why is this happening to me? Like, are you a prisoner? Oh. To be fair, his his asshole is being gaped open by a speculum. So, you know, something is happening. Oh. Here comes the piss. Oh. Starting out slow, just a few dribbles. Oh. Oh. Sort of hear it. Oh. 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 I'm sorry, sir. Can you shut up for a second so we can listen to this piss? Being sprayed into your butthole. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You can hear that. Oh, 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 oh. Keep the piss in. Don't let any dribble out. Out won't all piss on my floor, right? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. Okay, well, this video has taken a strange turn, a stranger turn. Huge, like a very large metal chain is now being lowered into that gaping ass. I guess the British man wants to dock. He's he's going to anchor himself into the butthole. So I, I don't know why yet. Okay, that's the noise. It's a. I mean, this chain is big. 
<laughs> yeah. Why? Uh, it, that it doesn't it doesn't feel good. It sounds like. Uh, oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Now the entire long chain is in this guy's butt. And now he's going to close up the speculum. Oh, yeah. Hey, oi! I thought I told you to keep the piss in your arse. Honestly, I don't know what's happening here. Oh, oh, oh fuck! Oh, gurgling. Yeah, keep it in. Keep it in. You can do it. Thanks for the pep talk. So he's, he's continuing to. Uh, <laughs> to close up the speculum and then he yanks it out. Yeah. Now he's pushing oh, the chain yeah. further into oh, the butt. Yeah, this looks some... And he's sort of obviously pulling the chain in and out. Don't forget there's still a lot of pee in that butthole. You can sort of hear that sloshing around. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. oh, oh God. Yeah. Someone's drowning. <laughs> glub, glub, glub. No, maybe. Oh. You have to keep it in. Yeah, the rest of the video is just him, you know, pulling that chain and dropping it in the guy's butt over and over. Man, this is some ASMR, huh? Yeah. All right, you get the idea. Thanks to Discord user Luke for submitting that. Also, have to say thanks to Haley's Comet. Haley uh, sent in a clip from the Jesse Lee Peterson show, one of my personal favorite. Now, like me, Jesse Lee has been obsessed with this uh, Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. He's got some thoughts on it. Always love to hear from Jesse Lee. It's amazing. Beta! Hope you're not calling me a beta. You're a beta. Beta man. Beta man. Beta. Beta man. Beta man. Do you think uh, Jesse Lee is going to call Johnny Depp a beta male for saying that Amber Heard physically abused him? Like he's he's a victim of domestic violence. Beta. I think he will. Does anyone want to take that bet? I'd be like a 95% chance of that happening. All right, Jesse, what do you have to say about Johnny Depp? I have been over the years, especially lately, been counseled with uh, married men and women who... Who the fuck is going to Jesse Lee Peterson for counseling? Would you ever confide in him? Jesse Lee, I've got some personal problems. When I was younger, my father abused me. Beta! Jesse, that is not helpful. All right, uh, Jesse is now speaking as if he's a licensed ther therapist here, giving counseling. Are just catching hell from one another, especially the man from the woman. And I wonder, why do men... And women get married. What's the purpose of getting married? Jesse, if you don't know, I I, I don't think any anyone can help you. So I started to ask. Why, why do men? Hey, I got a question. <laughs> why do men want to marry a woman? I mean, what's that about? You know, I think Jesse Lee is a lifelong bachelor, right? Does he even have kids? But he's gay. It's just to find out what was their purpose. Oh, that's a wild accusation that I uh, is based on nothing but uh, just uh, my gaydar. Because. Of getting married. And yeah. some said, oh, I wanted a family. Some said, yeah, I don't understand that either. Why would you want one of them? Yeah, I wanted love. So I was like, why Why do you think people get married and the marriage doesn't even last? God, he's such a simpleton. See, I don't understand. Why would you get married if then the marriage doesn't last? Well, because you don't know that going into it. You think it's, you know, it's going to last forever. That's why you marry someone. If you knew it was just going to end in five years, you wouldn't waste your fucking time. But, you know, things change, you know. I mean, God, Jesse, come on. Or well, if it does last, you catch a hell all through the marriage. Yeah. And I realized after talking to a bunch of them and questioning them about why did you get married and all you're catching is hell. Most of them, not all, admitted that the reason they got married was because they were lonely. And then I guess they get divorced because uh, the bitch won't leave them alone. She's always around. I don't have any peace and quiet. Like, be careful what you wish for. Let me fast forward to the part where he actually starts to talk about Johnny Depp. Some of you know 
Uh, this actor Johnny Depp. Depp. <laughs> Some of you who doesn't know Johnny Depp. The Depp actor yeah. Johnny Depp has taken the apparently st- this is some actor stand and then he played a pirate or something. In his defamation trial. As a matter of fact, Jesse Lee uh, tries to pronounce Pirates of the Caribbean and got him fired from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. It's like. He can't be bothered to finish words. That's amazing. And you can look at this man's wife if you watch any of the court stuff. You see hell in her. I don't know what happened in their situation, but you see the eyes of the devil in this woman. I mean, that's interesting and all. Uh, Jesse Lee doesn't get into the nitty gritty of the, of the trial. I would love to hear his opinion on the turd that was left on the bed. What I find more interesting then uh, the clip that Haley's Comet provided uh, comes earlier from the same episode at around uh, the 30-minute mark or so. And when they come together, they don't get along. He's talking about people from different cultures coming together. And so when you're bringing in these people from all around the world, their hearts are wicked. I think this is an anti-immigration rant, but Jesse goes further than that. That's why they were not able to build their country In the same manner that whites have built countries, right? Jesse Lee Peterson loves white people. And so I'm not sure if I'm for integration at all now. Just, Jesse, do I need to remind you that you're black? You benefit from integration. Into you know, it's it's an integrated country. You have the same opportunity. This is why you have a radio show. I think this country should be all white. Yeah. Think that through for a second, Jesse. That you can move into a white world because your world was all messed up. Where you came from was all... Uh, Maybe it's different in his eyes, you know, for black people because they were brought here unwillingly. And you come to here and other white countries and the first thing you want to do <laughs> is to attack the people that let you into their homes. Yeah, the U.S. is a white country. I'm with Jesse into Lee. Into the country. It's like inviting family members to your house and you let them stay there a week or two and after a while they take over. They eat up your food. You leave a little piece of pie, sweet potato pie in the refrigerator for lunch tomorrow (laughs) or dinner and you go home and they sitting up there and eat, just have eaten up your sweet potato pie. I don't even bother making sweet potato pie anymore because I know the non-whites are going to come and steal my pie. That's why I only buy, when I want to eat a pie, I'll go to Walmart and I'll buy a Patty LaBelle sweet potato pie and I'll eat it right in my car. I don't even wait to get home. I don't want to take any chances. No, I eat eat my sweet potato, my Patty LaBelle sweet potato pie (laughs) in my car. I would love to see video of that. Jesse Lee in his car with a fork, plastic fork, eating right out of the box. I got to protect my pie from the immigrants and the black people. Black people who hate America, the white man country. All right. Thank you very much, Jesse Lee Peterson. And finally, before we get into the news today, Miss May has submitted yet another Linda Finkel Hall of Fame nominee. This is Chris Crown and her Spartans singing their shit song, (laughs) Hug Me. Starts with some amazing instrumentals. Either that or someone's falling down the stairs. Remember a long time ago on Distorted View, we found that music uh, from uh, some sort of mental hospital. It was it was like the inpatient therapy orchestra. Is, is that something like this? It sounds a lot like it. Hug me, hug me, hug me, and that's okay. Hug me, hug me, hug me, and that is okay. What the fuck am I listening to? I mean, first of all, this recording sounds like it comes from the 1920s. Like this was originally played on a Victrola or something. Me, 
I'm looking at the record here. It's very strange. So Hug Me is a song by Lucille Billings, sung by Chris Crown and her Spartans from the stage play I Need Lovin' by director Lucille Billings. And the record is from uh, LB Ranch Recordings. The LB, of course, is Lucille Billings and the Lucille Billings Music Publishing Company. I think Lucille Billings had a lot to do with this song. I'm starting to think Chris Crown is actually a pseudonym for Lucille Billings. I am so curious about this stage play, this musical by Lucille Billings. I, I want to know about the other songs because this one is just someone screaming, Hug me! Hug me! Hug me! Hug me! I don't think we need to play any more of that. A few comments so far. Jesus Christ, this is amazing. I guess you had to be here little more information on the song. Um, there was a 1967 Detroit Free Press article detailing the origins of this release. Apparently, it was a promotional record to hype up a theatrical production that may or may not have ever happened. Uh, it, it never ended up on Broadway, that's for fucking sure. Anyway, thank you very much, Miss May, for another uh, interesting find. Actually, while I was uh, playing a little bit of uh, Hug Me, Miss May messaged me again. Maybe you're looking for a song a little more sensual than Hug Me. And by the way, Hug Me is a, a bit aggressive. She's not asking for a hug. She's telling you, hug me. And she's doing it in a, in a very loud, repetitive way. It's kind of scary. Anyway, if you're looking for uh, some sexy music, may I suggest Unknown Artist, which is the name of a band comprised of several high school students in Florida. A couple of the members include T.C. Massey and Mark, a.k.a. M. Diz. While the band was not a huge success, Massey continues to perform and DJ in Florida. So he's still in the music biz, even after the disaster that was this 2006 song called Boobs. I like boobs. It's a known fact, boobs are back. Yo, forget the ass, man, I'm going for the rack. Something about boobs that amaze me, makes me go crazy. Especially big boobs on a pretty lady. Big ones, little ones, small ones, tall ones. C cups, B cups, I even seen some G cups. I drink boobs up like I was sipping on a teacup. Boobs get me so... Yes, back in 2006, unknown artists proclaimed, boobs are back. Enough with the ass. These boys were ecstatic that uh, the focus was uh, shifting upward, so they recorded this uh, tit anthem. I wonder how T.C. Massey feels now, because I think we're kind of back to being an, an ass-focused society. But well, thank God, amen. Boobs are for guys like us, not gay men. Boobs were around since the days of the cavemen. Boobs are a blessing, yo. They well, so, like, asses were around since the caveman, too. Like, Save men. Yo, honestly, bras are not a friend of me. To me, a bra is simply a boobs enemy. They keep them all closed. They constricted. See, take the bra off, girls. Set them titties free. I wonder if they won their school's talent show with this song. O-B-S-O-B-S, my nigga. This is UA, also known as Unknown Artist Boobs. Thank you very much, Miss May, for that. Uh, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist. And I fucked up news right now. If you enjoy Distorted View Daily, please consider supporting the show by becoming a member of the Sideshow TV's member site, where you gain full access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every single week we do brand new exclusive shows just for paying members. Yesterday was a very fun Sideshow exclusive podcast, and I'll be doing another one tomorrow. So if you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. All major credit cards and PayPal accepted. Even better, if you use Spotify or Apple Podcasts to listen to DV, you can now subscribe to uh, brand new exclusive shows right in the app. 
just a few taps in your Spotify app or your Apple Podcast app. You can uh, you can subscribe and uh, start getting all of the exclusive shows that you've been missing. For more information, check out SuperFreakSideshow.com and DistortedView.com. And don't forget, we also have a Patreon account, Patreon.com slash DistortedView. Just another way for freaks to help out. Uh, and, you know, you can pledge as little as a dollar. Every little bit does help me. Again, Patreon.com slash DistortedView. Okay, three very quick stories now. for up, Alex Jones is once again in trouble for saying something offensive. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, not Alex Jones. Alex Jones's attorney is in trouble for saying something offensive. He didn't say it in court. He said it during his stand-up routine. What the fuck is going on here? The headline reads, Alex Jones's attorney, Norm Pattis, says the N-word with his pants down during a stand-up set. Well, at least he was trying to be funny. A high-profile attorney for conspiracy theorist Alex Jones used the N-word and other slurs during a stand-up routine with his pants down last month. This wasn't like years ago. This is last month. Uh, You just can't say certain words. They're off limits. Actually, I have uh, his set right here. I'm going to fast forward to the part in question. I, I actually watched the whole thing. And, you know, the audience, for the most part, we're on board with them. They kind of like this. All that, and then there is the matter of race. Uh oh. The N word, right? You know, can I say the N word? I, I guess not. I'm gonna get beat up in the parking lot. But I'm gonna try. Ready? Ready? All right, you try. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> this goes on for a while, and he's like, nigga. So I guess the bottom line, people, is you just can't say certain words. They're off limits. And one of those words is nigger. (laughs) He gave the audience what they wanted. The video surfaced this week of the performance at Totally's A Pizza, part of a competition that featured comedians and musicians and apparently attorneys. He was seen rambling about Black Lives Matter and making homophobic and racist remarks. I mean, I guess, like I said, I uh, I watched the entire stand-up routine. That, like, the homophobic thing, I guess, was uh, mentioning that um, there's a um, gay member of uh, the cabinet, like the president's team or whatever. Uh, it's Pete Buttigieg. Finally, there's an actual cocksucker in government or something. I don't know. It was like something stupid like that. I don't know if I'd call that even homophobic. Call a gay guy a cocksucker. I mean, it's a compliment, really. Flattered. The best part of the video is that uh, someone in the front row, there's a bunch of white people, and there's like one black woman in the front row, and she doesn't crack a smile (laughs) the entire time. I don't even think she blinks. She's just staring at this guy. A black woman sitting in the front row stares uh, at Pattis throughout the nearly eight-minute set, clearly unimpressed. He appeared to be proud of his performance when contacted by the Huffington Post, noting that he came in third overall. Oh, he came in third place in the competition? Voting was conducted via likes on Instagram, where Pattis has a large following and not based on audience response. You know what, though? The audience was laughing, I heard. I mean, there was some groans and stuff. Regarding the Black Lives Matter stuff, the joke went, joke, I guess, the comment went, I want to watch a ball game and there's Colin Kaepernick. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about Black Lives Matter. You know, even the commercials are fucking political now. Like, there's no real jokes in there. Just, just commentary. (laughs) It's like this podcast. No jokes, just someone rambling and sometimes saying the N word. Alex Jones has amazing legal counsel, by the way. All right. uh, Second story we have for you. A woman has married her pet cat. Okay. Apparently this story comes from fantasy land. A woman has married her pet cat in a bid to stop future landlords from separating them. She's tired of being evicted because of her cats. Deborah Hodge, 49, a crazy cat lady, aw, claims she has previously been forced to rehome three animals by landlords who did not allow pets in their properties. Well, this is why, like, before you move in, you check to make sure your cats are allowed. It's right in your agreement. I mean, just, you know, when you're looking for an apartment, find one that's pet friendly. You don't have to marry your cat. That's a bit extreme. Now facing eviction and terrified of losing five-year-old India. 
the cat. Deborah from Sidcup, Southeast London, held a civil ceremony on April 19th to tie the knot. The single mother of two, cats probably, right? Uh, the single mother of two hopes her commitment will show future landlords just how important it is for her that they stay together. Just claim you have PTSD or, you know, some sort of mental condition where you need a service animal. Your cat is your emotional support creature. Boom. Again, you don't have to marry the cat. She said, I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I married my cat. I recited vows under the universe that no man will ever tear myself in India apart. I set out my intention that I would never be separated from the animal I adore. I can't be without India. She is truly a sensation. She's truly outrageous. Jam. She is so friendly and amazing. She is fundamentally the most important thing in my life after my children. By marrying India, I need any future landlords to know that we come as a package and we cannot be separated under any circumstances as she is as important to me as the children. I'm sure the children love to hear that. We're on the same level as your cat. When you die, that dumb fucking cat is going to be in the will, huh? Taking some of our inheritance. She says, I refuse to be parted with her. I'd rather live on the streets than be without her. That that may end up happening. While living in a previous property, Deborah claims she was forced to give up her two huskies, Siri and Starshine, after her landlord threatened her with eviction if she kept them. I bet you these, she's like a horrible pet owner and they're fucking pissing and shitting all over the house. It stinks. It sounds like... Like, when she moved into the apartment, she had her dogs and everything was fine. Then the landlord saw how she lived and was like, oh, no, no, you're tearing up the fucking place. She said she was also left with uh, no choice but to pass on her cat, Jamal, when she moved into her, uh, into her current home five years ago. But she still just keeps acquiring animals somehow. She said, it absolutely broke my heart. Your pets become part of your family. It was just absolutely devastating having to say goodbye to them. Desperately missing her pets, Deborah successfully begged her landlord, okay, to allow her to get another cat in 2017. Unfortunately, the uh, the cat that she got, India, lost a leg in 2020 when she was hit by a car, meaning she can now often be seen perched on Deborah's shoulder or carried in her arms during trips to the beach. Deborah lost her job as a life coach, which isn't a real job half the time, right? Bored women say that all the time. I'm a life coach. Well, now she fears she could be evicted if she could not meet her next rent payment. Wait a second. So you're not being evicted because of the cat. You're being evicted because you can't pay the rent? This, this, why is this story even being written? Let's recap. Woman's not allowed to have a cat in her apartment, so she has to get rid of him. In 2017, she begs her landlord, Can I please, please have a cat? I'll be so good. It'll be clean, I promise. You won't cause any problems. And the landlord's like, okay, you can have a cat. Now, several years later, without incident, right? The landlord's not bullying her to get rid of the cat or anything. She just can't pay rent. And she's saying that uh, the landlord might make her get rid of the cat. What? Facing the prospect of trying to find a new home, she decided to marry India in the hopes it would show future landlords that the pair cannot be separated. Okay, so this, she's just future proofing her and her cat, her cat's relationship. Deborah wore a tuxedo while India the cat donned a bow tie, a cape, that is a smart look, and gold lame for their civil ceremony, which was officiated by a legally ordained friend. The newlyweds celebrated with their wedding guests by having a picnic in the sunshine. And then afterwards, she and India consummated their relationship. She's now behind bars for bestiality. No, that uh, that part didn't happen. Deborah said, I'm on my last pennies. <laughs> this wedding really, really drained my account. <laughs> she could have paid rent. Uh, no, she, I'm on my last pennies. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I married my cat. She said she had a group of friends there for the ceremony. Quote, they all think I've gone batshit crazy, but we all had a lovely day. My kids weren't there on that day. They just think that mom has lost the plot. I recited that they're mad. I recited vows under the universe that no man will ever tear myself in India apart. I think we read that part before. So there you go. That's uh, the woman who married a cat to save herself from future evictions. A flawless strategy, in my opinion. Final story we have for you today. I always love how brands try to expand their market. 
Sometimes it's even broader than brands. Not too long ago, here on the podcast, we were playing uh, commercials from like the Egg Council. You know, like the egg growers, I don't know, egg producers of America. They were really trying to get people to eat more eggs. It's like, all right, we got breakfast cornered. People love eggs for breakfast. But we, we need to get them eating eggs for dinner or lunch. We need to sell more eggs. We need to get people eating uh, lunch omelets, dinner egg souffles. So they could, you know, they came up with a, a whole advertising campaign, getting, you know, people to think about eating eggs later in the day. I thought of that when I ran across this last news story. Tropicana, you know, the orange juice people. Tropicana is releasing a cereal specifically intended to mix with orange juice. You know, the Tropicana people were like, uh, what's the most popular fast breakfast cereal? People eat cereal with milk because they like they pour it in their bowl. And when people have a bowl full of milk, they're not also going to want to drink orange juice. Those are like competing flavors. We need to somehow get people off of this cereal milk. Like people who eat eggs, they enjoy orange juice. The other breakfast foods are not a problem. Sausage, eggs, bacon, orange juice, pancake, omelets, orange juice, cereal, cereal you eat with milk. Until now. Dubbed the Tropicana Crunch, it is touted as the first ever breakfast cereal created to pair with Tropicana Pure Premium. TropicanaCrunch.com will be the only place to get the cereal. Starting on May 4th, the juice company will give away boxes for free while supplies last. All right, so this is more of a marketing stunt than anything, but still, it's weird as fuck, and I want to try it. Tropicana Crunch is described on the box as a honey almond cereal. The website claims that it has honey almond clusters inside. After experimenting with various flavors and textures, Tropicana decided on a granola-based cereal because it can resist the acidity in orange juice (laughs) better than flakes, which would become soggy more rapidly. The honey almond flavor was chosen to counteract the tartness of the orange juice. Tropicana has taken a bold attempt to address some of orange juice's perceived faults for the second time in the last year with the orange juice matching cereal. Tropicana toothpaste was produced last year as a limited edition giveaway of a toothpaste that was specifically designed to keep your orange juice uh, orange juice tasting good after you brush your teeth. Anyone who knows, you know, you drink orange juice and you brush your teeth, tastes fucking nasty. I mean, it's not a bad idea, that one, uh, on Tropicana's part. May 4th, uh, guys, that's the date. Go to TropicanaCrunch.com and uh, get your box. Or better yet, get me a box. I will try it on an upcoming uh, nocturnal transmission if I can somehow procure a box for myself. You ever want to see me vomit on stream? You can help me get a box. Again, TropicanaCrunch.com. All right, that's enough plugging for Tropicana. They're not giving me any money. They're not a sponsor yet. I do love orange juice, especially Tropicana. Ting. All right, that's a freebie. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Wednesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right, guys, I love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash distortedviewshow. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that fucking bell over there on YouTube. We've got a new YouTube channel trying to get to a thousand subscribers we're well over halfway there thank you to everyone who has taken a few minutes uh and and subscribed and also uh who have watched uh the videos over there i'm working hard uh to produce more for you timmy boo what it do this is libtard faggot hello i chose slash tv dick from the discord um i told you that i would try to spread the distortion on the guy i went with a date with i did not record any of our sexual activities classy classy faggot Mm. but he did come in my mouth and it gives me the chance to say this i love the aftertaste of semen in my mouth (laughs) anyway (laughs) keep up the good work love you timmy boo talk to you later i mean do you really really love like semen in your mouth the taste of semen I don't think anyone uh, like craves it in, in the traditional sense. I think people want you know get horny, and and that's part of it. They're like, yeah, when I have sex, the guy blows load in my mouth. This is part of it, but it's not traditionally known as a a good tasting substance. 
Hi. And there's a difference between the taste of semen and the aftertaste of semen. Hi, Tim. It's Tyler. I hope you're doing good today. I have a question for you. Uh-oh. This is another one of my uh, Ask a Homosexual uh, calls. Well, look, I'm not the authority on this type of stuff, but okay, go ahead. So, about half of our friends, my wife is kind of a hag, so like half of our friends are all gay. And we were watching that Do I Sound Gay uh, documentary. Oh the other yeah, day. heard about and that. I've always believed that the uh, the gay voice is kind of an affect, kind of like a bird call for yes. you know gays to signal to other dudes that you know they're down to suck or whatever. Um, she thinks the other thing, so uh, I told her I was gonna I was gonna ask. Uh, well, Ask, uh, my favorite podcaster. So, what's your uh, what's your? I mean, I, I'm an idiot. I don't know how people come up with their voices. My theory, though, is that it is not a natural thing. I think when some little boys realize they're different than their friends in the way that they act and what they're into, they start to search out and try to find people that are more like them on TV or in real life, whatever. This has nothing to do with like being attracted to guys yet. I'm sure the kids don't know that part of, of it. They just realize they're different. They're trying to find people that, uh, that, that act like them or are into the same things. And it could just be, it could also be women because that gay voice is very woman-like too, right? Like, yes, girl, yes, fierce. So it's probably a combination of these things, right? I think, it, you know, it, it, hap- it starts young and it's just... Um, Little kids trying to figure out who they are and where they fit in and all that stuff and uh, looking up to people that act like the way they they act or something. I don't know. Hey, Tim, this is Ziggo. Uh, In the past couple months or so, I noticed that every time you play the Chinese flute in response to any story uh, that hails from China, you don't play the second bit that you always play, where there's like a pause. And then all of a sudden, the oh. flute comes like back, comes back at full force. <laughs> yes, and that always cracked me up. And oh, I yes. am like sometimes I'll cut it off short. Really sad that you're not. Okay. You don't seem to be doing this anymore. Next time, I promise you'll get the full Chinese flute experience. What cars do black ladies drive? Is this a joke? <laughs> okay, what cars do black ladies drive? I don't know what this person is asking me. Really, I think maybe. He wants me to say Malibu because many years ago on the show, I had a Chevy Malibu. And for some reason, during the years that I had my Malibu, it it, it was this particular model. I saw only black women drive. It was all black women and me. And I was like, holy shit. I just accidentally purchased a middle-aged black woman's car. It uh, it did give me some street cred. I mean, you know, among middle-aged black women, that's it. I was laughed at by everyone else. But, uh, yeah, I do not miss that car at all. Not because it, it was a vehicle for a middle-aged black woman, but I, I like myself an SUV. I'm a, I'm a big, sturdy gal. I need something a bit taller and a bit wider. Now, if anyone knows what type of SUV a middle-aged black woman prefers, I will uh, go out and uh, trade my Kia Seltos for wh- whatever that is. My goal in life is to be loved and accepted by middle-aged black women. All right, uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys email me? Show at thestoreofview.com. Thestoreofview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you at 206-666-4463. That's 206-666. Oh, God. Oh, God. Believe it or not, I've had several uh, brain injuries. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the program. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you've got to sign up, superfreaksideshow.com. Otherwise, I'll see you back one more time as we end the week with the Friday show. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. They're cramming it in, you know, at butthole, at uh, butthole, assholes, buttholes. <laughs> this has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.